Hi again. Uh, so today we're going to be doing KEQ calculations and um, and looking at the uh, equilibrium constants. So what we learned last time was equilibrium constants is when you take the total concentration of all the products and multiply them together and you divide it by the total concentration of all the reactants and you get a, a constant, a constant that's not changing. And this constant, even if you add more products or more reactants, will reach new equilibriums and the KEQ uh, value will never change. Now the only thing that can change a KEQ value is temperature. So what is the meaning of a KEQ number? So a large KEQ value means that a lot of products are at uh, a lot of products are present at equilibrium and that's pretty and that makes sense too if we have a, a big number a number that is greater than one then um, that means that products are greater than the reactants because the product number is going to be larger than the reactant number and a small KEQ value means that the reactant number is going to be much larger than the product number and you'll get a value that is uh, smaller than one so again um, if you have a KEQ value, KEQ value that is greater than one, then products favored, and if you have a KEQ value that is less than one, then it's going to be reactants favored. So again, um, temperature is the only thing that can change the value of a KEQ, and concentration change, or pressure change, or surface area, or any of that other kind of stuff will not change the value of a KEQ. Now, let's try and take some of these principles and actually calculate a value of a KEQ. Oops. Now, going back one, uh, let's take a look at um, this equation right here. Now I've put on here uh, four steps right here to remind us how to solve it. So step one, make a table, fill in the table, add and subtract, and then calculate the KEQ or the unknowns. So uh, first let's read our question um, and then we'll make a table. So we have one liter, a uh, one liter reaction vessel contains this many moles of carbon monoxide and this many moles of water. After one hour, uh, an equilibrium is reached. And here's our equilibrium. We have carbon monoxide plus water forming an equilibrium with carbon dioxide and hydrogen gas. Now, under, under uh, an analysis shows that we have 0 0.250 moles of CO2 present. So, all of these mole numbers right here are all happening in a one liter container. So the concentration of CO2 at equilibrium is, well, uh, moles over liters. So this is going to be divided by one liter. Okay, So that makes our, our, all of our calculations easy. So the concentration of CO before equilibrium is 0 0.75 and the concentration of H2O before equilibrium is 0 0.275. So let's go ahead and make, do our step number one, make a table. So how we make a table is first by writing our formula again. So carbon monoxide plus water and that forms an equilibrium with carbon dioxide and hydrogen gas. So here is our formula and we're going to make a table uh, starting with our initial, our change, and then our equilibrium or sometimes we call this our ice table. Now the first thing is we we start to fill in the table of what we know. So we have we start with initially we start with 0 0.750 moles of carbon monoxide. So we have 0 0.750 uh, moles of carbon monoxide happening in a one liter reaction vessel so the concentration is 0 0.750 molarity and we have for water we start with a concentration of 0 
750 or 75 uh, concentration. Now at the beginning, our CO2 concentration is zero, and our hydrogen gas concentration is zero. Now since on the product side it's zero, our reaction is going to shift in this direction. It's going to shift right. And when we see at, at equilibrium, we have, so here is at equilibrium, so we're going to go under the E, we have 0 0.250 uh, a concentration of this. Now since it's a one to one to one to one ratio, uh, our hydrogen is also going to increase by the same amount, uh, which is 0 0.250 moles. Again, happening in a one liter reaction vessel, so we can just change that into concentration. So in order to go from zero, and now we have this, it must have changed uh, or in other words must have increased by 0 0.250. This also must have changed by 0 0.250. Now, since again, since it's a 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 ratio, this water must have decreased by negative 0 0.250. And same with this, negative 0 0.250. And therefore, our concentration of CO, carbon monoxide, is 0 0.50. And the concentration of this is going to be 0 0.025. So what we see is we have our, con our at equilibrium, we have our concentration of hydrogen gas, carbon dioxide, water, and carbon monoxide. And we know that our KEQ expression is going to be concentration of products over concentration of reactants. And in other words, our KEQ is equal to concentration of CO2 times the concentration of hydrogen gas divided by the concentration of water times the concentration of carbon monoxide. And we can put in some values. So this is a constant at equilibrium, so we have to use these numbers right here. These numbers. So again, concentration of CO2, which happens to be 0 0.250 times the concentration of uh, hydrogen gas, which is also 0 0.250, divided by the concentration of water, 0 0.025, and the concentration of carbon monoxide, 0 0.500. Okay, and if you use your calculator on this, you'll find that your uh, KEQ equals 5. Okay, now make sure you use your sig figs. We have 0 0.750, but we div technically we divided 0 0.750 moles divided by 1.0 liters. And this is two sig figs. So our KEQ expression, our KEQ value is 5.0. Now there is no units associated with KEQ, so it's just 5.0, no units. Okay, so our first step, what we did before, was we made a table, we filled in the table with what we knew, and we knew this one, and this one, and we knew this, and then we filled in, uh, then we filled in the table um, using intuition here. So going from zero to 0 0.25, we knew it increased by that much, and therefore this must have decreased by this much. We then subtracted to get these numbers, and we added to get some of these numbers. And then we just calculate KEQ. Now, sometimes you'll have questions like this one, 
where KEQ is given to you and you're asked to find the concentrations at equilibrium. Now this is a little bit different but it uses pretty much the same principle. So uh, first read the question. If 4.0 moles of SO2 and 4.0 moles of NO2 are placed in a 5 liter bulb and allowed to come to an equilibrium, what concentration of all species will exist at equilibrium? So the first thing you need to do is figure out what is the concentration of 4.0 moles because it is not 4.0 molar. Okay, It's happening in a 5 liter reaction vessel. So what you have to do is the concentration of SO2 is equal to 4.0 moles over 5.0 liters, which happens to equal 0 0.80 uh, moles per liter, or in other words, molarity. Okay, so that's the initial concentration of SO2. And the initial concentration of NO2 is the exact same thing. Now, let's make our table. So, first write the formula. SO2 plus NO2 makes SO3 and NO. So again, initial concentration, our change, and then our equilibrium. So our initial concentration of SO2 is 0 0.8. We calculate that, and NO2 is also 0 0.8. Now the way it is worded is that it's initially placed with these two concentrations and then it's allowed to come to equilibrium. So the initial concentration of SO3 is zero, and the initial concentration of NO is zero. Since all, all the whole, everything is on the reactant side, then what is going to happen is going to shift to the right. Shift's going to, shift's going to happen to the right, because there is nothing here to shift left, and that means these ones are going to decrease. Now, we don't know how much this is going to decrease by, and we do not know how much this is going to increase by, but we know that it's going to increase. So we're just going to say plus x. Okay, So we know it's going to go up, we just don't know about how much it is. But we do know that it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so this is also going to be a plus x. But since it's again one-to-one to one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio, this has to decrease by a factor of x. And same with this one. So at equilibrium, our concentration of SO2 is going to be 0 0.8 minus x. This one's also going to be 0 0.8 minus x. And SO3 is just going to be x. And this is also going to be x. So when we write our KEQ expression, our KEQ is going to equal the concentration of SO3 which is x, times the concentration of NO, which is also x, divided by the concentration of SO2, which happens to be 0 0.80 uh, minus x, and this is also going to be 0 0.80 minus x for the concentration of NO2. Or what we can just kind of simplify it by going x squared over 0 0.80 minus x squared. We know that KEQ is going to equal 3.5 is 3.5 and if we root this we can say that this is going to just be x over 0 0.80 minus x okay so what well, if we were to solve for x okay if we were to solve for x we would find that x equals 
0 0.52. Okay. So what we did right here is I just took this equation here, which is uh, the root 3.5, which is roughly around 1.87. So this would, if I were to help you to find this one, this would just be 1.8708. Uh, and that would equal x over 0 0.80 minus x. And if I were to just solve for x and isolate x, I would find that x would equal uh, 0 0.52. But the question doesn't ask what x is going to equal. The question asks what is the concentration of all the species uh, at equilibrium. But some of the species at equilibrium are equal to x. So we can already just answer half of the questions right here. And we'll just go SO3 concentration is equal to x. So the, S the concentration of SO3 is equal to 0 0.52 molarity. The concentration of NO, which is also equal to x, is going to equal also 0 0.52 molarity. And the concentration of NO2, we just plug x back into here. So 0 0.80 minus 0 0.52, and we see that equals 0 0.28. And we also plug this number into here, which is the same formula. And we find the concentration of SO2 is equal to also 0 0.28. To eight molarity. And this would be our final answer. Okay? So sometimes you'll get a question that asks you find the KEQ. And sometimes you'll get a question like this that gives you the KEQ, and you have to use it over here, and you have to find the concentration uh, of the different species at equilibrium.